Hey everybody, it's story time. Story time. So what this means is we're going to make something up as we go. We just kind of come up with, with it in our heads mm -hmm. and we go back and forth and make up a whole story. Yep. So it's just being creative. Being creative and thinking on your feet. You want me to start, Mama? Please do. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Byron who really, really wanted to go to the moon. But he realized that it wasn't easy to get to the moon. Like, you couldn't just walk around the corner and go to the moon. There wasn't a bus or shuttle. So he had to start thinking of a plan. When Byron thought of the plan, he spent all morning, all night trying to come up with it. He was throwing papers, he was losing his mind, like how could I make it to the moon? And then Byron decided to make a time machine. When he made the time machine, it was huge. It took him weeks and he kept his door locked so nobody would find out. Oh, Byron apparently is very smart and secretive. So he started to test the time machine out um, and he ended up in some interesting places. On his first try, he ended up way, way back in time where there were dinosaurs and he got to meet some pretty interesting dinosaurs. When he, when he made it to the dinosaur land and met the interesting dinosaurs, at first he was really scared because he's like, this is not where I was trying to get to. I'm trying to get to the moon. Now, how the heck do I get back to my parents? So Byron decided to befriend some of the dinosaurs so they wouldn't eat him. So he started walking up to him. He said, hello, my name is Byron. But he said it like he was scared. Mm -hmm. And some of them couldn't speak English. Then finally, he met this one dinosaur named Dino. And Dino said, hey, little buddy, come over here. So Byron walked over to him and he said, everybody here doesn't speak English. We speak Dino Rajarachis. So we don't understand you, but I understand English. So him and Di Byron and Di Dino got really close and they had a good time that day. They did have a good time. Um, and Din Dino was his name, Dino, who speak Dino Rajarachis. Um, he told Byron, after they had their bestest time, he told him a way he could get back to his time. So, they said their goodbyes, and they knew that they probably wouldn't see each other ever again, because it went, once Byron went backwards, no, sorry, back to forward, then he would, Dino really didn't exist anymore, because mm -hmm. he had passed away years before that Extinct. so yeah so dino took byron back to a place that he can get back to the world he's from so when he went back dino gave him a magic potion to drink he said once you drink this potion then you'll be able to get back to where you're from so byron drank the potion and at first, nothing really happened. He was just asked Dino, like, well, why isn't this working? Then he started to feel funny. And then before you know it, he started doing something like that. <laughs> and then he passed out, woke up, and he was back in his room where his time machine and where it all, where it all started. So as soon as Byron got back up, he said, okay, I have to try again. And that's what he did. He tried again. It took him like another day. And then he said, I got it. I'm finally going to make it to the moon. So when he was just about to do the next step to get back in the time machine, his mom knocked on the door and Byron jumped because his mom didn't know about the time machine. So he just jumped up and said, uh, yes, mom. <laughs> and his mother said she wanted to just come in and check on him because she hasn't been seeing from him, seeing him and hearing from him recently. So she starts to jiggle the knob on the door and Byron is panicking like, what do I do? How do I hide this from her? What do I do? What do I do? So then he decided the best thing he could do in that moment is get a giant sheet and try to cover it up and maybe not let mom all the way in, just kind of crack the door and let her peek in. So when he was just about to open the door, mom's phone rang and she said, hey girl. 
<laughs> oh, never mind, Byron. Go ahead, finish your jewel. I'll see you later. And Byron felt relief. Mm -hmm. So he threw the sheet off and said, let me hurry up and get to the moon. So he goes back to his time machine, and then he gets in, and he said, okay, this has to be it. I have to get to the moon. He gets in. He puts in a cold, and then all of a sudden it starts shaking. And shaking and shaking and shaking. He's like, this is it. This has got to be it. So he goes through the time machine and does this really fast thing. He's going through time traveling, and he ends up in his destination. But his destination wasn't the moon this time either. It was the future. Byron was in the future with flying cars that were flying over his head. Um, there was uh, um, holograms mm -hmm. and everything. So he's just looking around like, what is this? It was the coolest yet scariest thing ever. But then he met a friend. And his friend was Sarita. Sarita. Sarita was wondering who this person is that doesn't look like they're from their time because everybody dresses differently in the future. Everybody looks differently. Everything's floating and flying cars. So she saw, Sarita saw, that Byron looked really lost. So she decided to be friendly and go up to him and just ask if he needed help. And um, he didn't really want to tell her where he was from, but he kind of ended up having to. So she was amazed and they talked about it for hours and hours and she wanted to help him figure out how to get to the moon to his ultimate destination. So that is what they did. They spent hours chilling, having fun and all that good stuff. But then Sarita said, okay, Byron, this is not for you. You're a little behind the time and your outfit doesn't fit the future. It's time for you to go. So Sarita takes Byron over to where he gets his magic potion, gets a magic potion, he gets in, and of course he starts shaking. <laughs> and he is back home. But now he has had um, information from Sarita after they talked and they figured it out because Sarita's pretty smart too. So now he gets ready for the final plan that absolutely has to work. Third time's a charm, right? Well, we'll see. So Byron said, okay, gotta get this. I'm not a quitter. And that's what he did. He did not quit. He got back in his time machine and he said it's time. Put in the coal, did a little prayer, and guess what? He starts shaking like this. And then Byron popped up on the moon. Woo -woo! Now he is on the moon. And at first, he's so excited because this is what he's been trying to do for months, weeks, days. And it feels like forever. And now he's here. But when he gets there, it's a little different than he expected. It's really quiet. There's not much else there. So then he's just standing there. And then Byron says, I have to do what I came here to do. He takes a piece of the moon and he puts it in his mouth to see if it tastes like cheese. <laughs> sure enough, it was not what he expected. It tastes like wood and rocks. It wasn't cheese at all. And Byron said, what? I thought the moon was made out of cheese. But he started walking around, did his thing. He enjoyed his stay while he was there. But then he said, I'm tired, it's time to go back home. So then Byron did just that. He looked at the moon, looked at how beautiful it was, kicked it a few times because he said it wasn't cheesy like he thought. And then he got back. Well, he found, he, he went and got an, a potion out the, out the water. It was water on the moon. <laughs> he would have got a potion out of it and drank it and he did this. <laughs> Then he ended up back in his room. And now the goal was accomplished. He did what he came to do. Not what he thought it was, but still an amazing adventure. And Byron realized that was the time of his life. <laughs> That's all!
<laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching. Bye. Bye. Now, now, Coco, you know that's a no-no.